This is Anthony from All Metal Music. I'm on the phone with Mike from Moonspell. How have you been? Hey, all's great, man. Just uh, hanging out here in sunny Portugal, doing uh, some interviews today for the next release called Night Eternal, and just uh, chatting away and answering any Moonspell questions you got out there. Under Satanai came out a few months ago. What was the fans' reaction to that? Well, at first, I think they were very sceptic, like, uh, and also the band was, because we were also afraid to get into the old classics. But uh, when the fans and ourselves, you know, heard the, the overall result, we were really impressed. And I think that, uh, you know, the conclusion of that and the biggest celebration you could ever have from that was doing a Halloween party in Lisbon in the Portuguese Coliseum. We had over 3,000 people on Halloween night, and we played under Satanai from beginning to end. And our, like, most hardcore fans were there, like, young kids, old kids, you know, our family, everyone. And everybody was, like, just blown away uh, with these classic tunes. And it was just like a magical night. So I think uh, if this ha release hadn't have came, we wouldn't have had that moment, and many people wouldn't have had, like, one of the best Halloween nights ever in Portugal. And uh, I have to thank that for, you know, having an opportunity to going back to these classics and also for the fans to receive them and also to appreciate them for what it is and somehow bring them back together to the Moonstall roots. How did Under Satanai sell? Well, I, I have no idea about the sales on Under Satanai. So we definitely didn't do it for the sales because uh, uh, these days... You know, a new album is always more successful and always sells better than uh, uh, when you remake something. We really did it for the underground times and for and for ourselves and for the fans. Uh, I doubt it sells much. So <laughs> it's a collector's item, I guess. What bands have you been listening to lately? Well, I've been, uh, I listen to a lot of, uh, I like Sepultura. I, I like uh, old Metallica, like... Uh, uh, the, the first three albums, especially. Uh, I listen to a lot of uh, old death metal, like Morbid Angel and, and Obituary. But uh, lately, I've also been listening to stuff like Mastodon, and uh, I've always I've listened to Tool for many years now. Uh, you know, a different view on music, but you know, each one of them are pure at their intent and their original, you know, artistic view on music. I like those bands for that. And uh, I always like, you know, classic rock also. Mm -hmm. I always like the, I like some ballads once in a while. I was listening to Bon Jovi a couple of days ago and also Guns N' Roses. And, of course, that music was part of my gender, you know, when I was a kid uh, growing up. And at a certain point, I refused that I liked that kind of music because of the whole death metal, black metal, you know, extreme influence as a teenager. But now I look back, it was definitely like the best music I could have started listening to, and uh, and that's the reason why, you know, I've always been proud of music. I, I started with the, the best. On Night Eternal, there's a duet with the ex singer from Gathering, The Gathering. Whose idea was it to work with her, and how was it working with her? It was definitely Fernando's idea because uh, he wanted a female vocalist since he had written that uh, specific lyric for a duet, and uh, we were thinking of a female vocalist trying to help out in, in ideas of who would fit the best and also who would be available to, to be able to do this. And then uh, uh, sometimes the most obvious is not in front of you at most times. And uh, we thought of so many people, but all of a sudden we just reminded our good old friend Annika from the gathering, and we know her since like 96 when we toured with them. And uh, we've always been friends since then. We've always had a special connection. So it was uh, obvious uh, the, the, the choice to have. And also her being one of the most original female vocalists out there. And that started a bit this whole you know, mixture of uh, metal with uh, uh, you know, sweet and uh, melodic vocals. And she definitely did something special for me. So I'm very grateful. I think it's uh, an amazing song. You can hear it on my place already. So we've had really cool comments so far.
The Crystal Mountain Singers also did some choir vocals on the new album. Why were they chosen to sing and not a different choir? Well, with, with me, so we tried to do everything as uh, uh, home-like as possible. So uh, with Under Satanite, we had uh, done also that same experience with the you know, vocalist in Portugal, and that was with uh, Carmen. And she did a fan fantastic job, and it worked out so well doing her vocals in our own studio with uh, uh, Pedro and uh, our sound engineer. And then that came uh, time for the new album. We also were influenced to have more female vocals on this new release. And uh, we invited again Carmen and uh, Sofia and also Patricia, uh, which are good friends of ours, and they all have their separate projects. And uh, they, you know, they've been around us for years and know them so well that it made it really easy to get something really nice and innocent and, you know, uh, true from from their vocals. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't there while they recorded, but I was definitely blown away when I, I heard this for the first time in the studio after uh, doing the drums. And it just gave me a whole different perspective on, on the album and on, like, the sound of, of, of Moonspell and what we managed to accomplish with this new release. And, like, I could, I'm really overwhelmed. Uh, of course, I'm getting used to listening to the album. I try not to listen to it too much to keep it fresh. I think it's definitely something grand and, and amazing with all these female influences and all these cool harmonies and, and dynamics that, you know, so, uh, you know, common in the last Moonspell releases.